Welcome back to Short Stories with Lola, and I'm ready to get into today's story. I want to share my victory over a long-standing enemy, shame. This spirit had held me captive for years, subtly influencing my decisions and keeping me from the freedom I desired. The Bible verse that encouraged me to begin this journey is James 5.16, which says, Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. Although shame itself is not a sin, it often led me to sin through fear, lying, and disobedience. The Bible also says in Ephesians 5.11, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. In a sense, I want to awake my sleeping soul from the dead. I want the light of Christ to shine on me because I've been carrying shame for way too long and I have allowed it to control, ruin, and repress my life in certain areas. Shame is sneaky. It often starts small and festers quietly, hiding behind things like fear, anxiety, and false humility. For a lot of us, the devil doesn't take massive hits or strikes to destroy our lives at once. He starts from childhood and subtly triggers small hits or traumas. The wounds of destruction we then by ourselves sustain for years to come. In my case, shame masked my true feelings. I tell my friends and family that I'm okay. I like being alone. I like being quiet. I'm in no rush to get married and I don't think he's a good fit, etc. When in reality, shame would not let me come out and say, I'm not always okay. I'm lonely. I would like someone to gist with often. I really want marriage and would prefer to be introduced to this particular kind of guy. Essentially, shame caused me to lie and hide what was truly going on. What I truly felt, who I truly am, who I'm really becoming. When I realized many of my life's struggles were rooted in shame, I began searching the Bible and the internet for verses and ways to overcome shame. I found this article online titled, The Spirit of Shame, Exposing Shame, and I immersed myself in it. It spoke of everything that I had experienced but didn't have the words for. It perfectly described how shame operates. In a nutshell, the writer explained in one section how the spirit of shame lies to people telling them they're not good enough, making them live as observers in their own lives, dependent on others and full of self-criticism. You become shy, quiet, timid, and passive. The spirit of shame attacks the mind and distorts how you view yourself. That was me. I avoided opportunities, convinced myself I didn't deserve more and played small at work. Shame never allowed me gain more skills like the person or people I admired because I didn't want to look like I wanted titles or accolades. I shouldn't care about those type of things. It's not what a child of God should want to be. What lies? Shame was there, hiding behind one of its evil accomplices, false humility, which is essentially pride. The writer went on to give tips on how to overcome this evil spirit of shame. She wrote, you need to renew your mind and start thinking differently. Identify and reject all the negative thoughts the devil has planted in your mind. It is time to become who God created you to be. Shame has no power over you. Hmm. This is what I had come for. Yes, I had already taken the authority given to me by my Lord Jesus Christ and rebuked, rejected, bound and cast the spirit of shame out of my life. But now I needed to reject all the negative thoughts the devil had planted in my mind about myself and my life, especially past occurrences where this shame first took root, which was during my early childhood, between the ages of 5 and 13 by my calculation of things. In this time, did shame really creep into my life and build a stronghold in my mind? I was so ashamed of where we lived. Our house was not so clean or elegant. Things were not arranged in a way 
conducive for efficient living and much of the furniture was old and falling apart. It was rat infested and somehow always dusty and to me in many ways grimy. The exterior wasn't any better. We lived in a flat in an estate that was familiarly known as the Dustbin Estate because trash was thrown into it from the nearby bridge. It had piled up over the years and was a familiar eyesore both to those inside and outside of the estate. The thing is, my dad made enough for that to not be our living quarters, but sadly, we lived there for almost a decade. I could never fathom inviting any of my friends from the schools I attended over. They were mostly from affluent families, and the fear of being made fun of by other kids when the news got out was horrifying. I was also ashamed of my mom, among other things. She was educated, but by the way she spoke, you wouldn't think so. Her mindset was also not progressive. She thought so small and backward. She once told a friend of mine at university who wanted to be a doctor that she, my mom, didn't like that as a career for women, as it takes them out of the home and they're not able to tend to their families well. I never wanted her around my friends. In my mind, she could never be good enough for the people I wanted to be around. To be honest, she passed down that small thinking to me. I also wanted to become a doctor at one point, but she kind of talked me out of it. She used the fact that I have the sickle cell disease and said I wouldn't be strong enough for it since the training and work hours were very rigorous. That disease was probably the genesis of my shame. My mom always hammered into my brain that it's not something I should go around sharing. I understand there was and still is a stigma around the disease, but it's probably where all the shame started, which manifested into the fear to speak up or speak out. One time I actually peed on myself in a classroom full of students at Corona because I was scared to tell the teacher I needed to use the bathroom after we were told not to leave till we were done with rehearsals. Another time, the same thing happened. We were in assembly for a long time and yet again, I didn't ask to use the bathroom. Obviously, I was laughed at thoroughly by my peers on both occasions. Oh, sweet Jesus. Excuse me. My mom definitely knew about the second time during the assembly. I was present when the teacher told her about it, but she never said anything to me afterwards. Didn't try to correct me or figure out why. I was glad she didn't back then, but years later as an adult, I would come to understand that she actually failed me in that moment. Looking back now, I probably inherited a lot of shame through her words and actions. A pattern that could be generational, but I didn't try to know more about her upbringing. Or maybe it was from the experiences of having a sickle cell child and what she faced back then. Who knows? But I'm forgiving her now. I'm sure she did the best she could. My only other qualms is that she never sought more knowledge. She stayed in what she knew. She was content with how she was and where she was in life. I don't think I'd ever understand that, but to each their own, I guess. I'm sharing this as a way of confession, to bring what has been hidden in darkness to light. It's not to disparage or villainize anyone. All that to say that I repent of all these negative thoughts and words I have ever said about my upbringing, my background, my mom, my health conditions, and any other negative thing I felt about myself. I reject these negative words and thoughts and come out of agreement with them. I no longer choose to believe them. Now, armed with this new understanding from delving into the Bible and reading articles online, 
I knew I had to take serious action. It wasn't enough to just bind and cast out shame. I needed to rewire my thinking, reject the lies, and embrace the truth of who God says I am. The story of the woman with the issue of blood came in handy here. I was made aware of how that story speaks so much about shame from another article I read online. So I used what Jesus told her after she had made known to him and everyone in the crowd. Talk about confession and bringing darkness to light. How intentional is our Lord? He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I thereby proclaim to myself and all in hearing or reading of this, that I have been made well by the Lord and no longer ridden with shame. I am healed and I go in peace to live, to live my life. I declare no more self-defeating thoughts and actions, self-pity, negative thoughts about myself, about my life and about others. I declare I will no longer shrink myself or cower out of activities that bring exposure. I choose to believe the word of God that says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made as it pertains to both my body and my mind. Writing this on September 30th, 2024, I declare that shame no longer holds me captive. I am free and I walk in peace and fullness God intended for me. I pray that anyone listening to this story can find the same freedom. Amen. This is Short Stories with Lola. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that.